Hey guys, um, don't mind me, I'm drinking a little coffee, I know it's kind of late, but I'm needing the caffeine, honestly. Um, this one I'm going to kind of make short because I want to make another one too. Um, this one's about the God of Convenience, the idol that we've made. Everything's got to be convenient. All this mess with this virus, none of it's convenient, guys. I went to Walmart today and, you know, I waited, and I wouldn't, like, but 20 people, I just happened to be in there. We weren't out of toilet paper, but there was a lot of line, and I saw some, and I was like, okay. And so I waited in line, about 15 minutes. Wasn't too bad, but walking down the aisles, more and more aisles are getting wiped out. More and more people are panicking. More and more people are fearing. Um, but this God of convenience, convenience on every corner, got to have all the food, got to have everything stocked up. You got to stock up your refrigerator and your freezer and, so that your family can have the convenience of just the microwave. What if we lose power, guys? They're telling people, California told everybody to stay home. Businesses are closing. I know people have to close their whole business. They still have all the expenses. The rents do. Build on the building, the supplies, just a, man, a mess. Well, guess what? What if a storm comes, guys? It's happened here in Dallas once that I know. I mean, and power lines go down or a big rainstorm. And, well, what if the power worker guys are told to stay home, guys? Or, you know, I mean, any number, I mean, would you have thought two weeks ago that this was today? That you, your church was going to not be there closed and everybody's going to be online or whatever? And, and a lot of them aren't even going to be open soon after this. Look at some of my other messages, but convenient. Pull up to, I live in Dallas, so of course, you know, or you live in any big city. Pull up to an intersection, gas station on every corner, 7-Eleven, a convenience operation, the big chain ones, uh, or the mama pop ones, or a fast food place of some kind. And it's not just every corner, drive down the road, any major road, mall after mall, after shopping center, after little shopping center, big shopping center, you know, it's like. And mixed in with them was churches, convenient gospel. Everybody wanted the 45 minute message in and out so they could go to the Cowboys game or go to the lake or do whatever they wanted to do and tell God they, you know, they showed up at church. They showed up high and mighty or whatever. You know, it's like, man, if it's not convenient, it's not, you know, when grocery stores were open, I mean, there's stores that are convenient just to certain markets. You can get bread with 18,000 different flavors on it. Restaurants, you know, all different kinds of stuff. There's a restaurant row in Dallas, and I went down there for some kind of something. It was like, man, crowded. I wouldn't want to go. It was a Friday night. It's like, man, you could spend days going from one end to the other. It's only a mile or two, a couple miles, and never eat at all these different places. Bars and restaurants, bars and restaurants, bars and restaurants. Convenience, guys. If it's not convenient, we don't want it. If it's not at our fingertips, we don't want it. I had, you know, a cable TV and there's, you know, you packages with 800 channels. My God. What if you watch a show every day on one of those channels? You couldn't even get to that. I mean, do the math. Couldn't even get to the 800, you know, it makes no sense. It's become an idol, convenient. We, that's why the instant, that's why the internet's so blah, blah, blue, blue up. Cause it's convenient, it's, it's instant. Everybody's got a computer, they want you to talk to you. They got, went to the doctor's office a while back and the lady was waiting for the doctor and she had a tablet. Our kids had a tablet, even a little baby, almost a baby, maybe a baby, a couple years old, three years old, they had a tablet. Everybody was, had their, head up there behind in the device 
on the cell phone, the latest and greatest, you spend $800 on a stupid cell phone. Everything's got to be convenient and quick and instant and instant gratification. <sighs> convenient. If it's not convenient, we don't want it. Faster, better, quicker. Where's God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word in all this? Where's your neology instead of your theology? How are you getting your information? Who's your source? Nobody's taking the time to do it. This is God of convenience has destroyed us. People are more concerned about their seat in the church and the padding of it and all the other stuff than they are about the Holy Ghost being present and in people and getting people set free and saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and having an altar call and really, really ministering and after praying for people because it's not convenient to everybody, gone, the pastors and everybody else has bolted. They got things to do, they're too busy because to, it's not convenient. Just saying guys, okay, this is not one of the other idols. It's just, there's many of them. When the Lord told me this, I was like kind of shocked, but he was like, the beginning of this, he said, it's about the storm coming, but he said, America has just as, as, as many idols as India. I'm like, how? That's kind of like poof. Really, God? So, time to get out of these idols, guys, because there's a storm coming, because that's where this, where this all, all are at. This this virus may be the big storm. I really don't think so. But the storm that's coming is not going to be destructive. Yet it is. But it's. But the Lord told me it's it's a purging purification. It's just you know I watched the news a while back. It was about the election and it was decision time and da da da. It's decision time, guys. Twenty twenty decision time. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, His Word. Or not at all. No more riding the fence. No more slapping a label on it. Calling it a church. No more saying God or using Jesus a little bit and then everything's okay and you're all caught up into your convenient, selfish, prideful, arrogant stuff. Not concerned about anybody's soul but your own. I'm not making the rules, guys. God made them. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a watchman. I'm kind of like Larry the Cable Guy. I'm all raw, okay? I get it. Maybe not good for the polished guy. Somebody else is going to have to hit the, hit the polished people. It's not me. But maybe he's not going after that many polished people anyhow, honestly. I'm saying that you can't be saved to be polished. That's not what I'm saying either, guys. Don't take this the wrong way. But look what happened in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Read Matthew 22. But look what happened to the people that didn't listen. That didn't heed what the Spirit was saying unto the church. That didn't heed the calling. They had stuff to do. It wasn't convenient to follow Him, to follow Christ, to go to the wedding. That's prepared. He's picking the menu. He's picking where you get to sit. He's picking what you get to eat. Not you. So let them stay in the potter's wheel. Quit trying to be the potter. We're just the clay, guys. Do what he do what he tells you to do. Quit, you know. It may not be convenient. That manna from heaven that sustained the people was pretty plain Jane bread. It doesn't say anything about anything really. And it said just he told them not to hoard it, and they did. And it rotted, and they told them, you know, and they complained, and they wanted meat, and they got it. What happened to the people that stuffed their face full of meat? How long did they last? Nobody wants to preach about that, talk about that. They want the warm, fuzzy, feeling messages because it's convenient and it draws crowds and you can fill up a church and pews and, and everybody can go home in 45 minutes or two hours or whatever. Go home just like they came. Where are all the churches today, guys? That's pretty, the proof's in the pudding. 
How long are they going to be closed? A lot of them aren't going to reopen. Some of them have too big of budgets. They were too used to drawing too many people for convenience. And it ain't there no more. Oh, yeah, they're going to survive for a little while, a short time. But the biggest mega church in the country closed. It wasn't open today. 60 some thousand people. Where's your God on that one, guys? Sorry. Not convenient. Not going to be a Burger King moment. It's going to be, you know, a Gideon moment in this one. Guys, it may not be convenient. He's looking for obedience, not convenience. Not your selfie of yourself and your pride and all your egotistical megamania garbage, which is the other message I just put out. Too many idols, guys. There's a storm coming. I'm not making this up to get you to follow me on YouTube or to say, yay, that you know, I saw something you didn't. That's a message out there. It's our first Peter. I think it's 1 and 20. There's no secret revelation. I'm going to end with this. That's what I was getting to got this in prayer a couple days ago. He was like, Steve, Steve, when you go to Walmart, what do you do? I, you know, I go to my shops. I shop other stores too, but what do you do? You walk out to your car. Okay? You get in your car. You start it. Okay? You go drive up there. Okay? Well, you, my feet had to get me out there. My legs had to walk me out there. My hands had to turn the ignition on. Got to the intersection, my brain had to say turn right or left or, you know, where, you know, I didn't know where I was going. Parts of the body, guys. We can't discount other parts of the body for convenience. I couldn't have got there without my feet, my legs, but my legs couldn't turn the ignition on to start the car. My, my hands couldn't tell me where to go. No more big eyes and little U's though, guys. They're all just as important. They were all necessary and they all fit together and they all had to be needed for one mission to get to Walmart. Well, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word are all there for the body, but it's all one. We gotta be one. We can't discount what others are doing. Guys, because we don't, you know, we may not, you know, if you're the, if you're the head, be the, if you're, I mean, there's only one head. If you're, if, if you're the legs, be the legs. If you're the arms, be the arms. If you're the hands, be the hands. If you're the feet, be the feet. If you're the heart, be the heart. If you're, you know, if you can see, be the see. see. If you can prophesy, prophesy. If you can pray more than others, pray more than others. You know, but we're the body. Let's act like it and be connected and get her done. Get the job done. What he wants, the obedience, none of this more, no more of this convenience, guys. It's killing us. You go to you go to some of these convenience stores and you pay, you know, five times what anything is worth just because it's quick gas, get quick gas, get quick something to eat. Most of it's junk, all prepackaged stuff. Look at the late, you know, anybody that's in the health kick industry or kit on the health kick, look at the labels, you know. 24 grams of sugar, 48 grams of sugar, just tons of just not good stuff for you guys. Cokes, beers, and in cans. They say in cans, the aluminum gives you, you know, dementia or whatever. I mean, it's just, you know, this could go on and on, but it's convenient. In and out. There's even a Burger place called that, in and out, drive through, everything's super soft, you know, it's convenient, quick, get home, so you can turn on your TV with 800 channels, because it's convenient, pick what you want, guys, how convenient is today, right now, this moment in time, how convenient was your church service this morning, oh yeah, you flipped on YouTube and watched it, so it was convenient, it's still, it's still convenient, how long is that going to last? How long are you going to stay connected with that? How long is that going to be personal? It's not. But there's another reason why God shut that, shut a lot of that down because there was so much false religiosity and just dogmatic, problematic stuff that wasn't from him. It's not going to be convenient, guys. 
It's just not. Since I brought that up, the dogmatic, problematic stuff, okay, this is what the Lord showed me. It was like, man, guys, about this, you shut all these churches down. It's like, because listen to my mega, mega message about the mega God, mega idol, but in the GMO gospel, but like God, you know, Took me back to a, something natural. I, worked, I sold a car a year ago, guys. I didn't even like it. I hated the car a lot part. Didn't like the internet part because it was just it just worked better. Um, I was okay with that, but I left after a couple years in the industry because it just wasn't for me. And I drove by this building. It was a really nice building, guys, where people pulled up to get their cars and stuff was covered. and. You know, it was part of almost, it wasn't really a parking lot, but it was a covered area, but it was open. But it was tile. It was really nice, guys. The building was really nice. Everything inside was really nice. Pretty, pretty new. I drove by a couple years later and they're tearing it down. Like, man, God, it was a perfect, I didn't say God, but because I was a prodigal son at the time, I was like, man, it was a perfectly good building. Why would you tear it down? And they put a convenience store in there, one of those big chain ones that you see competing with each other. There's two big major ones. I'm not going to name them. That's what the Lord showed me. He said, that's what he's doing now. He's shutting down the religion that we've created in this world and these false churches because their houses are built upon sand. He wants them built upon the rock. What do you tell Peter? Peter, who do men say that I am? Upon this rock, I'm going to build a church. If your house is built upon the rock. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. There's so much he wants. It's time to get your neology going and throw out your theology, guys. But anyhow, because the theology, there's so much convenience. And, you know, go listen to somebody that knows the Bible in 14 languages, the Greek says this, the Hebrew says this, the, you know, well, okay, maybe that's good for some people, but it's not good for me. I'm sorry, it's just not. It's okay, but I want my spirit to be the spirit of discernment and to connect with the spirit of who's teaching me and to know that we're on the same page. So, anyhow, and where am I getting my, who's my source? It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And where are you getting that? Your secret place. Then it to be a closet, mine's my living room. But, you know, nobody's here. So it is my secret place. It's pretty cool, really, honestly, to me. I get a lot of stuff from God, and I'm sitting in my living room. One day I'll preach a message on, on my prayer place, just not... For just so you'll know, so you'll see. I'm sure, you all, some of y'all have your own too. So, anyhow, yeah, we love you guys. Um, no more convenience. Done. God's done with that. Love you. Talk to you soon.